Hi, it's Derek from Tomcat Gas Training, and welcome to part two on Specialist Flu Systems. Today we're looking at plume management kits, so let's get on with it. Well, what is a plume management kit then? Well, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It manages the plume made by condensing boilers so it doesn't become a plumey nuisance. So, this is a standard flu system and the products of combustion come out of this bit here. So if you've got this too low or pointing at somebody's house, you could be creating a plumey nuisance. So instead of using that system, we could use this system where we've got, instead of it just coming straight out, we've got an elbow now and then we've got another elbow on the top pointing to a, another direction. The only problem is the maximum angle you can put for this is 45 degrees from 90. So that would be actually installed wrong. But it doesn't spin anymore. Also, we can't just come off the top like that because we have to have a minimum height in a flu system using a plume management kit of 500 millimeters. So we use these kind of things, which are extension pieces. And this extension piece will then be able to take us away from windows and doors or pluming onto somebody's boundary, but only if the manufacturer allows you to, because we cannot use a plume kit to get us out of an illegal installation for a flu unless the manufacturers say we can do. So let's have a look at the few of the do's and don'ts then with plume management kits. Now the documents what might help us out with using plume management kits are, of course, the manufacturer's instructions, J2 of the building regulations, BS 5440 part one, and finally, gas safe technical bulletin 016. So they're the documents that can always help you out when you're looking at positionings or installation of plume management kits. First one is this carport one we've got here. Now again, if the manufacturer says you cannot do this, then you can. But I know Baxi and Worcester, if you've got their uh, flu system under a carport, prefer you to do this. So we need to still install the flu as it should be. So 200 away from the eaves or the, um, the carport. But we still need to be two meters off the floor. If we're less than two meters off the floor with this system, then we'll still need to put a terminal guard. And the terminal guard is there to protect the flu system from damage. The terminal guards used to be there to stop people getting burned, but there's no heat coming from this now, so we're using the terminal guard because BS5440 says we have to. But it's now there just to protect the flu system rather than us getting burnt from it. And But we still need to comply, it still needs to be 50 mil all the way around from the front. And we can get specialist terminal guards for this flu system. They're normally coated or they're made of stainless steel or they're plastic coated. So, when we come above the roof, we must be 300 above the pitch of the roof, like we would be from ground level to stop snow and leaves and rain bouncing back in there. The other major thing is it has to face the same way as the air inlet, because like I've put here, the plume kit must discharge its products of combustion and have its air in, in the same pressure zone. That basically means facing the same way on the wall. So if we terminated it back here, so it's looking up the roof, then that's not allowed. So we're not allowed to do that because it takes us out of the pressure zone. So you've got different pressures coming in to what you've got going out of the boiler so it could cause the problems. The carport also has to be open on at least two sides, but we would prefer three sides. But most of the manufacturers for these plume kits will say as long as it's got two sides. And then that will stop all the pluming getting under the carport. 
Also, if we have any horizontal runs on this flue system, now it says between one and a half degrees to three degrees, like I've put here, falling back to the boiler because it needs the water to go back down the condensing drain. And what this pluming kit does is basically, because of its height, it makes the um, condense go back to water again. So most of it goes back down into the boiler rather than coming out as a pluming nuisance. Now one of the things you can't do with a plume kit is this. So this is an extension or a conservatory and this is the old position of the flume. So the products of combustion came out here. You cannot use a plume kit to take the products of combustion out through the roof and leave the air intake coming in your kitchen extension or your conservatory. You cannot do that. So that would be deemed at risk if you did do that. But this is what you would have to do. You would have to take the flue through on a vertical flue system and you would have a distance of whatever the manufacturer's instruction says. Now I've seen this as little as 300 and up to 1500. So you would follow the manufacturer's instructions and you would use a vertical kit. Now I have seen it also where you, the, the elbow comes out of the flue as well so they use the old bit here and they stick it up there. Uh, technically can you do that? As long as the manufacturer said you can have white showing on your flue then technically you could do but you wouldn't want to. You'd use a proper vertical flue kit. So that's how you would get over if the flue flues into a conservatory or a kitchen extension after the extension's been built. So, like I said, you cannot use a plume management kit to get you out of an illegal installation. Now one of the other things you'll find is boundaries. How far we need to be away from boundaries. So if we've got two houses here split by the middle with the boundary. And we've got the flue facing the boundary. So if the flue is facing a boundary, it needs to be more than 600 millimetres away. But if we have a plume kit, and we turn it to 45 degrees, that can be reduced to 300 mil going straight across because it will give you 600 mil on that 45 degrees. Also running parallel with the boundary, we need to be 300 mil away. And again, if we're not 300 mil away, we could use a plume kit going that way because basically what a plume kit does is halves your measurements. So we would only need to be 150 mil away if our plume kit was then on a 45 degree. Pretty much like we've got down here where we're facing a window or a door or an opening into a building. We need to be two meters away according to 5440 part one. But if we have it on the 45 degree, then we're still two meters away, but technically we're only a meter away if we're facing it. So they're the good things what a plume kit can do. It can reduce your measurements by half, but like I say, only if the manufacturer says you can do. Another important flue consideration is what I've put here in green. So the plume kit plus the concentric flue system, so the standard flue system, must not exceed the total length of the flue system designed for that boiler. So there might be a bit of maths involved. So if we take this situation here where we've got a window and a door and the flue has come right in the centre, technically we need to be 300mm away from the opening within the door and the window. What we mean by the opening, we mean where the actual window hole is, not the frame. So it's not measured from the frame, it's measured from the opening. Now if we can't make this 300 then with a plume management kit, we can take it up above the door and the window 300. And uh, that will reduce our pluming nuisance as long as we have at least 150 mil from the sides. Because remember, this allows us to half our measurements. So the air inlet will still need to be more than 150. If we haven't got 150 for the air inlet, then technically we can't use a plume kit. So they're the major things you're going to find with the plume management kit. Now then, Worcester, their flue system naturally already has a plume management kit in it. You don't need to buy a separate plume kit most of the time because 
if I just undo this bit here, it's a bit fiddly while I'm holding it, and I spin it round, so it's now like that, and click it back into position, I've now got the flue could go upwards. I can also turn it to this way and this way. Okay, and I can deflect it this way and that way. No, I can't turn it downwards because if I was turning it downwards, it would be sending the products of combustion back down here. So it allows us to go, if I put it straight up, which is, what's in the middle like that, I can go that way, I can go that way, and I can go up in the top, but I can't go down. So that's what one already built in. And Worcester are the only ones who have it built into the turret like this. If you wanted to do it on this flue system, they do actually produce an elbow like I'm showing here where you can just push the elbow on the top and it's on a 45 degree and you can angle it either straight up to the left or to the right. Remember you can't do it downwards. So that's a quick look at plume management kits. Now also some of the boiler manufacturers produce specialist flues on the lines of the plume management kit and they call them balcony kits. So in this situation where we've got a public walkway and the flue is flowing under the balcony, they've extended the products of combustion out underneath the balcony and protruding out for more than 25 mil. Also, the flue length for this needs to be more than 500 mil. But always follow manufacturer's instructions when you're installing these specialist flue systems. So if you've liked this video, why don't you give me a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want good old YouTube to tell you when I'm uploading videos. Because I don't know at the moment. Anyway, all I've got left to say is thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.